Hello everyone. So today I'm going to be showing you how we can use Foretics 1D to automatically calculate the RF value for the bands within our Jello block image. Now, the RF value stands for retardation factor or relative front value of our particular bands, and it's useful for roughly sizing your protein, your DNA, or your RNA um, without the presence of a molecular weight ladder if you've not included one in your experiment. The principle being that high molecular weight proteins or longer sequences, higher base pair number of DNA, RNA, will have a harder time moving through your gel and thus will appear higher up within your gel than lower molecular weight or smaller base pair sequences of DNA or RNA. The relative, uh, the RF value is simply a function of how far has my protein DNA, RNA moved as a function of how far it could have moved. So to do this, we calibrate it to the relative front, which is the, it's not hugely visible in this image, but it is the die front of whatever die you've included as part of your experiment when you've run your sample on your gel. So the, the die front acts as a visual indicator of where our lane ends, and that is the theoretical maximum of how far our protein or our sample could have moved if it was complete if it was incredibly tiny so i'm using this image here which isn't the best image but it does have a pretty visible um, die front as part of the image not all of them do um, but what we're going to do is we're going to tell the software where our band is we're going to tell the software the entire length of the lane and it will automatically perform that calculation for us so the first step we need to do is tell the software where our lanes are and where they, and more importantly, where they start and end. Now, I'm drawing a box across these lanes here. If you're in the situation whereby your gel has gone slightly frowny, which, is, which has happened with this gel, and it doesn't fit accurately within a square box, if you click the subdivide button here, you get additional handles with which to warp your lane box to match the attributes of your gel. And you can even go further than this. If you keep clicking subdivide, you can get more handles to really bend your lane box to match how your data looks. And you can edit your lanes if you need to add any kind of horizontal warping in, or you can move them about manually if they're not uh, equally distributed amongst your gel. So I cover that in some of my other videos. Just thought I'd cover it here quickly. That that's how you would kind of, that's a level of manual control you've got over how your lanes appear and how you define them, things like that. Now, I've got the relative die front to line up the bottom of my lane box. Unfortunately, on this image, it's not very clear where the top of my lanes start, so I'm just going to leave it there for now. But the idea is that you need to know where the start of your end it, where the start of your lane is, and where the bottom of your lane is, because this is going to be your theoretical maximum travel distance, and then your measurements for your bands will be done relative to this. So if I, I can skip the background removal and the molecular weight steps for this, if I come straight through to my band settings, automatically detect my bands, add in the ones that are a bit too faint to be captured under these particular settings. So now I've detected my bands, these diamonds in the center of the band is where the software detects the, the the section of greatest intensity within the band. And what this really means is the peak of the band. So this diamond here is where our measurements are taken from for our RF, our RF value. And it's as simple as coming down to the choose column section and then turning on the RF view. And now this is giving me the RF value of the particular band that I'm interested in. So if I click this one here, if I come through to lane three, if I turn lane three on, so lane three, band one, we can see here that this has a RF value of 0 0.4952. What this means is, essentially this band that I'm looking at has traveled about halfway down the lane so halfway down the theoretical maximum it could have possibly traveled and you can use this value 
to determine kind of this, the rough sizing of your protein, your DNA, your RNA, whatever it may be that you're looking at on your image, you can see how far it's migrated and how that relates to all of the other samples within your experiment. And that's it in a nutshell, essentially. RF is a ratio. It is how far has my band traveled out of a theoretical maximum out of the entire lane that it could have traveled. Now, there are some SOPs out there that use this value um, and some protocols that use this value. Uh, molecular weight, including a molecular weight ladder within your experiment is always going to give you more accurate sizing. Um, but if your particular workflow doesn't cover that, or if you're particularly interested in using the RF value within your experiments, this is how you would access that. This is how the software will calculate it for you and allow you to export it into CSV, into Excel for further calculations, or into our PDF reports for the end of your experiment. As ever, thanks for watching, and if you'd be interested in trialing out Phoretics 1D within your lab with your own data, please check out the links in the description below.